It may surprise you to learn that I was host to Mr. Khrushchev for a half day when he visited the United States as a state visitor. But according to President Eisenhower, Khrushchev had expressed a desire to learn something of American agriculture. And after seeing Russian agriculture, I can understand why. <laughs> as we talked face to face, he indicated that my grandchildren would live under communism. After assuring him that I expected to do all in my power to assure that his and all other grandchildren will live under freedom, he arrogantly declared in substance, you Americans are so gullible. No, you won't accept communism outright, but we'll keep feeding you small doses of socialism until you'll finally wake up and find you already have communism. We won't have to fight you. We'll so weaken your economy until you fall like overripe fruit into our hands. I speak to you as a fellow citizen of the United States of America, deeply concerned about the welfare of our beloved country. I am not here to tickle your ears, to entertain you. I will talk to you frankly and honestly. The message I bring is not a happy one, but it is the truth. And time is always on the side of truth. Truth must be repeated again and again, because error is constantly being preached round about. I realize that the bearer of bad news is always unpopular. As a people, we love sweetness and light, especially sweetness. I am sorry to say that all is not well in so-called prosperous, wealthy, and powerful America. We have moved a long way and are now moving further and more rapidly down the soul-destroying road of socialism. The evidence is clear, shockingly clear for all to see. With our national prestige at or near an embarrassing all-time low, we continue to weaken our domestic economy by unsound fiscal, economic, and foreign aid policies which corrupt our national currency. With the crass unconstitutional usurpation of power by the executive branch of the federal government, anti-spiritual decisions of the Supreme Court, all apparently approved by a weakly submissive rubber stamp Congress, the days ahead are ominously frightening. It is imperative that American citizens become alerted and informed regarding the threat to our welfare, happiness, and freedom. No American is worthy of citizenship in this great land who refuses to take an active interest in these important matters. Stand up for, for freedom, no matter what the cost. It can help to save your soul and maybe your country. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the danger, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously.